Edgar Allan Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, born Edgar Poe, January 19, 1809, October 7, 1849, was an American writer, editor, and literary critic. Poe is best known for his poetry and short stories, particularly his tales of mystery and the macabre. He is widely regarded as a central figure of Romanticism in the United States and American literature as a whole, and he was one of the country's earliest practitioners of the short story. Poe is generally considered the inventor of the detective fiction genre and is further credited with contributing to the emerging genre of science fiction. He was the first well-known American writer to try to earn a living through writing alone, resulting in a financially difficult life and career. Poe was born in Boston, the second child of two actors. David and Elizabeth Eliza Arnold Hopkins Poe. David Poe abandoned the family in 1810, and Eliza Poe died the following year. Thus orphaned, the child was taken in by John and Francis Allen of Richmond, Virginia. They never formally adopted him, but Poe was with them well into young adulthood. Tension developed later as John Allen and Poe repeatedly clashed over debts, including those incurred by gambling, and the cost of secondary education for Poe. He attended the University of Virginia but left after a year due to lack of money. Poe quarreled with Allen over the funds for his education and enlisted in the Army in 1827 under an assumed name. It was at this time that his publishing career began, albeit humbly, with the anonymous collection Tamerlane and Other Poems, 1827, credited only to a Bostonian. With the death of Francis Allen in 1829, Poe and Allen reached a temporary rapprochement. However, Poe later failed as an officer cadet at West Point, declaring a firm wish to be a poet and writer, and he ultimately parted ways with John Allen. Poe switched his focus to prose and spent the next several years working for literary journals and periodicals, becoming known for his own style of literary criticism. His work forced him to move among several cities, including Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City. In Richmond in 1836, he married Virginia Clem, his 13-year-old cousin. In January 1845, Poe published his poem The Raven to instant success. His wife died of tuberculosis two years after its publication. For years, he had been planning to produce his own journal The Pen, later renamed The Stylus, though he died before it could be produced. Poe died in Baltimore on October 7, 1849, at age 40. The cause of his death is unknown and has been variously attributed to alcohol, brain congestion, cholera, drugs, heart disease, rabies, suicide tuberculosis, and other agents. Poe and his works influenced literature in the United States and around the world, as well as in specialized fields such as cosmology and cryptography. Poe and his work appear throughout popular culture and literature, music, films, and television. A number of his homes are dedicated museums today. The Mystery Writers of America present an annual award known as the Edgar Award for Distinguished Work in the Mystery Genre. He was born Edgar Poe in Boston on January 19, 1809, the second child of English-born actress Elizabeth Arnold Hopkins Poe and actor David Poe Jr. He had an elder brother William Henry Leonard Poe, and a younger sister Rosalie Poe. Their grandfather David Poe Sr. had emigrated from County Cavan, Ireland, to America around the year 1750. Edgar may have been named after a character in William Shakespeare's King Lear, a play that the couple were performing in 1809. His father abandoned their family in 1810, and his mother died a year later from consumption, pulmonary tuberculosis. Poe was then taken into the home of John Allen, a successful Scottish merchant in Richmond, Virginia who dealt in a variety of goods, including tobacco, cloth, wheat, tombstones, and slaves. The Allens served as a foster family and gave him the name Edgar Allan Poe, though they never formally adopted him. The Allen family had Poe baptized in the Episcopal Church in 1812. John Allen alternately spoiled and aggressively disciplined his foster son. The family sailed to Britain in 1815, and Poe attended the grammar school for a short period in Irvine, Scotland, where John Allen was born, before rejoining the family in London in 1816. There he studied at a boarding school in Chelsea until summer 1817. He was subsequently entered at the Reverend John Bransby's Manor House School at Stoke Newington, then a suburb north of London. Poe moved with the Allens back to Richmond, Virginia in 1820. In 1824, Poe served as the lieutenant of the Richmond Youth Honor Guard as Richmond celebrated the visit of the Marquis de Lafayette. In March 1825, John Allen's uncle and business benefactor William Galt, said to be one of the wealthiest men in Richmond, died, leaving Allen several acres of real estate. The inheritance was estimated at $750,000. Poe died in 
By summer 1825, Allen celebrated his expansive wealth by purchasing a two-story brick home named Moldavia. Poe may have become engaged to Sarah Elmira Royster before he registered at the one-year-old University of Virginia in February 1826 to study ancient and modern languages. The university, in its infancy, was established on the ideals of its founder Thomas Jefferson. It had strict rules against gambling, horses, guns, tobacco, and alcohol, but these rules were generally ignored. Jefferson had enacted a system of student self-government, allowing students to choose their own studies, make their own arrangements for boarding, and report all wrongdoing to the faculty. The unique system was still in chaos, and there was a high dropout rate. During his time there, Poe lost touch with Royster and also became estranged from his foster father over gambling debts. Poe claimed that Allen had not given him sufficient money to register for classes, purchase texts, and procure and furnish a dormitory. Allen did send additional money and clothes, but Poe's debts increased. Poe gave up on the university after a year, but did not feel welcome returning to Richmond, especially when he learned that his sweetheart Royster had married Alexander Shelton. He traveled to Boston in April 1827, sustaining himself with odd jobs as a clerk and newspaper writer. At some point, he started using the pseudonym Henri Lorenet. Poe was unable to support himself so he enlisted in the United States Army as a private on May 27, 1827, using the name Edgar Ray Perry. He claimed that he was even though he was 18. He first served at Fort Independence in Boston Harbor for $5 a month. That same year, he released his first book, a 40-page collection of poetry titled Tamerlane and Other Poems, attributed with the byline by a Bostonian. Only 50 copies were printed, and the book received virtually no attention. Poe's regiment was posted to Fort Moultrie in Charleston, South Carolina and traveled by ship on the Brig Waltham on November 8, 1827. Poe was promoted to artificer, an enlisted tradesman who prepared shells for artillery, and had his monthly pay doubled. He served for two years and attained the rank of sergeant major for artillery, the highest rank that a non-commissioned officer could achieve, he then sought to end his five-year enlistment early. He revealed his real name and his circumstances to his commanding officer, Lieutenant Howard. Howard would only allow Poe to be discharged if he reconciled with John Allen and wrote a letter to Allen, who was unsympathetic. Several months passed and pleas to Allen were ignored. Allen may not have written to Poe even to make him aware of his foster mother's illness. Frances Allen died on February 28, 1829, and Poe visited the day after her burial. Perhaps softened by his wife's death, John Allen agreed to support Poe's attempt to be discharged in order to receive an appointment to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Poe was finally discharged on April 15, 1829, after securing a replacement to finish his enlisted term for him. Before entering West Point, Poe moved back to Baltimore for a time to stay with his widowed Aunt Maria Clem, her daughter Virginia Eliza Clem, Poe's first cousin, his brother Henry, and his invalid grandmother Elizabeth Cairns Poe. Meanwhile, Poe published his second book Alaroff, Tamara Lane and Minor Poems in Baltimore in 1829. Poe traveled to West Point and matriculated as a cadet on July 1, 1830. In October 1830, John Allen married his second wife Louisa Patterson. The marriage and bitter quarrels with Poe over the children born to Allen out of affairs led to the foster father finally disowning Poe. Poe decided to leave West Point by purposely getting court martialed. On February 8, 1831, he was tried for gross neglect of duty and disobedience of orders for refusing to attend formations, classes, or church. Poe tactically pleaded not guilty to induce dismissal, knowing that he would be found guilty. He left for New York in February 1831 and released a third volume of poems, simply titled Poems. The book was financed with help from his fellow cadets at West Point, many of whom donated 75 cents to the cause, raising a total of $170. They may have been expecting verses similar to the satirical ones that Poe had been writing about commanding officers. It was printed by Elam Bliss of New York, labeled as second edition, and including a page saying, To the U.S. Corps of Cadets this volume is respectfully dedicated. The book once again reprinted the long poems Tamara Lane and Al Araf but also six previously unpublished poems, including early versions of To Helen, Israfel, and The City in the Sea. He returned to Baltimore to his aunt, brother and cousin in March 1831. His elder brother Henry had been in ill health, in part due to problems with alcoholism, and he died on August 1, 1831. After his brother's death, Poe began more earnest attempts to start his career as a writer. 
He chose a difficult time in American publishing to do so. He was the first well known American to try to live by writing alone and was hampered by the lack of an international copyright law. Publishers often produced unauthorized copies of British works rather than paying for new work by Americans. The industry was also particularly hurt by the Panic of 1837. There was a booming growth in American periodicals around this time period, fueled in part by new technology but many did not last beyond a few issues and publishers often refused to pay their writers, or paid them much later than they promised. Throughout his attempts to live as a writer, Poe repeatedly had to resort to humiliating pleas for money and other assistance. After his early attempts at poetry, Poe had turned his attention to prose. He placed a few stories with the Philadelphia publication and began work on his only drama Pollution. The Baltimore Saturday Visite awarded Poe a prize in October 1833 for his short story Miss Found in a Bottle. The story brought him to the attention of John P. Kennedy, a Baltimorean of considerable means. He helped Poe place some of his stories, and introduced him to Thomas W. White, editor of the Southern Literary Messenger in Richmond. Poe became assistant editor of the periodical in August 1835, but was discharged within a few weeks for having been caught drunk by his boss. Returning to Baltimore, Poe obtained a license to marry his cousin Virginia on September 22, 1835 though it is unknown if they were married at that time. He was 26 and she was 13. He was reinstated by White after promising good behavior, and went back to Richmond with Virginia and her mother. He remained at the Messenger until January 1837. During this period, Poe claimed that its circulation increased from 700 to 3,500. He published several poems, book reviews, critiques, and stories in the paper. On May 16, 1836, he and Virginia Clem held a Presbyterian wedding ceremony at the Richmond boarding house, with a witness falsely attesting Clem's age as 21. The narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket was published and widely reviewed in 1838. In the summer of 1839, Poe became assistant editor of Burton's Gentleman's Magazine. He published numerous articles, stories, and reviews, enhancing his reputation as a trenchant critic which he had established at the Southern Literary Messenger. Also in 1839, the collection Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque was published in two volumes, though he made little money from it and it received mixed reviews. Poe left Burton's after about a year and found a position as assistant at Graham's magazine. In June 1840, Poe published a prospectus announcing his intentions to start his own journal called The Stylus. Originally, Poe intended to call the journal The Pen, as it would have been based in Philadelphia. In the June 6, 1840 issue of Philadelphia's Saturday Evening Post, Poe bought advertising space for his prospectus, Prospectus of the Pen Magazine, a monthly literary journal to be edited and published in the city of Philadelphia by Edgar A. Poe. The journal was never produced before Poe's death. Around this time, he attempted to secure a position within the Tyler administration, claiming that he was a member of the Whig Party. He hoped to be appointed to the Custom House in Philadelphia with help from President Tyler's son Robert, an acquaintance of Poe's friend Frederick Thomas. Poe failed to show up for a meeting with Thomas to discuss the appointment in mid September 1842, claiming to have been sick, though Thomas believed they had been drunk. Though he was promised an appointment, all positions were filled by others. One evening in January 1842, Virginia showed the first signs of consumption, now known as tuberculosis, while singing and playing the piano. Poe described it as breaking a blood vessel in her throat. She only partially recovered. Poe began to drink more heavily under the stress of Virginia's illness. He left Graham's and attempted to find a new position, for a time angling for a government post. He returned to New York where he worked briefly at the Evening Mirror before becoming editor of the Broadway Journal and, later, sole owner. There he alienated himself from other writers by publicly accusing Henry Wadsworth Longfellow of plagiarism, though Longfellow never responded. On January 29, 1845, his poem The Raven appeared in the Evening Mirror and became a popular sensation. It made Poe a household name almost instantly, though he was paid only $9 for its publication. It was concurrently published in under the pseudonym Quarles. The Broadway Journal failed in 1846. Poe moved to a cottage in Fordham, New York, in what is now the Bronx. That home, since relocated to a park near the southeast corner of the Grand Concourse and Kingsbridge Road, is now known as the Poe Cottage. Nearby he befriended the Jesuits at St. John's College, now Fordham University. Virginia died at the cottage on January 30, 1847. 
Biographers and critics often suggest that Poe's frequent theme of the death of a beautiful woman stems from the repeated loss of women throughout his life, including his wife. Poe was increasingly unstable after his wife's death. He attempted to court poet Sarah Helen Whitman who lived in Providence, Rhode Island. Their engagement failed, purportedly because of Poe's drinking and erratic behavior. There is also strong evidence that Whitman's mother intervened and did much to derail their relationship. Poe then returned to Richmond and resumed the relationship with his childhood sweetheart Sarah Elmira Royster. On October 3, 1849, Poe was found delirious on the streets of Baltimore, in great distress, and in need of immediate assistance, according to Joseph W. Walker who found him. He was taken to the Washington Medical College where he died on Sunday, October 7, 1849 at 5 o'clock in the morning. Poe was never coherent long enough to explain how he came to be in his dire condition and, oddly, was wearing clothes that were not his own. He is said to have repeatedly called out the name Reynolds on the night before his death, though it is unclear to whom he was referring. Some sources say that Poe's final words were Lord help my poor soul. All medical records have been lost, including his death certificate. Newspapers at the time reported Poe's death as congestion of the brain or cerebral inflammation, common euphemisms for deaths from disreputable causes such as alcoholism. The actual cause of death remains a mystery. Speculation has included delirium tremens, heart disease, epilepsy, syphilis, meningeal inflammation, cholera, and rabies. One theory dating from 1872 suggests that cooping was the cause of Poe's death, a form of electoral fraud in which citizens were forced to vote for a particular candidate, sometimes leading to violence and even murder. The day that Edgar Allan Poe was buried, a long obituary appeared in the New York Tribune sign Ludwig. It was soon published throughout the country. The piece began, Edgar Allan Poe is dead. He died in Baltimore the day before yesterday. This announcement will startle many, but few will be grieved by it. Ludwig was soon identified as Rufus Wilmot Griswold, an editor, critic, and anthologist who had borne a grudge against Poe since 1842. Griswold somehow became Poe's literary executor and attempted to destroy his enemy's reputation after his death. Rufus Griswold wrote a biographical article of Poe called Memoir of the Author, which he included in an 1850 volume of the collected works. Griswold depicted Poe as a depraved, drunken, drug addled madman and included Poe's letters as evidence. Many of his claims were either lies or distorted half-truths. For example, it is now known that Poe was not a drug addict. Griswold's book was denounced by those who knew Poe well, but it became a popularly accepted one. This occurred in part because it was the only full biography available and was widely reprinted, and in part because readers thrilled at the thought of reading works by an evil man. Letters that Griswold presented as proof of this depiction of Poe were later revealed as forgeries. Poe's best-known fiction works are gothic, a genre that he followed to appease the public taste. His most recurring themes deal with questions of death, including its physical signs, the effects of decomposition, concerns of premature burial, the reanimation of the dead, and mourning. Many of his works are generally considered part of the dark romanticism genre, a literary reaction to transcendentalism which Poe strongly disliked. He referred to followers of the transcendental movement as frog pondians after the pond on Boston Common, and ridiculed their writings as metaphor, run mad, lapsing into obscurity for obscurity's sake or mysticism for mysticism's sake. Poe once wrote in a letter to Thomas Holly Chivers that he did no dislike transcendentalists, only the pretenders and sophists among them. Beyond horror, Poe also wrote satires, humor tales, and hoaxes. For comic effect, he used irony and ludicrous extravagance, often in an attempt to liberate the reader from cultural conformity. Metzengerstein is the first story that Poe is known to have published in his first foray into horror, but it was originally intended as a burlesque satirizing the popular genre. Poe also reinvented science fiction, responding in his writing to emerging technologies such as hot air balloons and the balloon hoax. Poe wrote much of his work using themes aimed specifically at mass market tastes. To that end, his fiction often included elements of popular pseudosciences, such as phrenology and physiognomy. Poe's writing reflects his literary theories, which he presented in his criticism and also in essays such as The Poetic Principle. He disliked didacticism and allegory, though he believed that meaning in literature should be an undercurrent just beneath the surface. Works with obvious meanings, he wrote, cease to be art. He believed that work of quality should be brief and focus on a specific single effect. To that end, he believed that the writer should carefully calculate every sentiment and idea.
Poe describes his method in writing The Raven in the essay The Philosophy of Composition, and he claims to have strictly followed this method. It has been questioned whether he really followed this system, however. T.S. Eliot said, It is difficult for us to read that essay without reflecting that if Poe plotted out his poem with such calculation, he might have taken a little more pains over it, the result hardly does credit to the method. Biographer Joseph Woodcrutch described the essay as a rather highly ingenious exercise in the art of rationalization. During his lifetime, Poe was mostly recognized as a literary critic. Fellow critic James Russell Lowell called him the most discriminating, philosophical, and fearless critic upon imaginative works he has written in America, suggesting, rhetorically, that he occasionally used prussic acid instead of ink. Poe's caustic reviews earned him the reputation of being a tomahawk man. A favorite target of Poe's criticism was Boston's acclaimed poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, who was often defended by his literary friends in what was later called the Longfellow War. Poe accused Longfellow of the heresy of the didactic, writing poetry that was preachy, derivative, and thematically plagiarized. Poe correctly predicted that Longfellow's reputation and style of poetry would decline, concluding, We grant him high qualities, but deny him the future. Poe was also known as a writer of fiction and became one of the first American authors of the 19th century to become more popular in Europe than in the United States. Poe is particularly respected in France, in part due to early translations by Charles Baudelaire. Baudelaire's translations became definitive renditions of Poe's work throughout Europe. Poe's early detective fiction tales featuring C. Auguste Dupont laid the groundwork for future detectives in literature. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle said, Each of Poe's detective stories is a root from which a whole literature has developed. Where was the detective story until Poe breathed a breath of life into it? The mystery writers of America have named their awards for excellence in Thieging or the Edgars. Poe's work also influenced science fiction, notably Jules Verne who wrote a sequel to Poe's novel The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym off Nantucket called An Antarctic Mystery, also known as The Sphinx of the Ice Fields. Science fiction author H.G. Wells noted, Pym tells what a very intelligent mind could imagine about the South Polar region a century ago. In 2013, The Guardian cited the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket as one of the greatest novels ever written in the English language, and noted its influence on later authors such as Henry James, Arthur Conan Doyle, B. Traven, and David Morrell. Like many famous artists, Poe's works have spawned imitators. One trend among imitators of Poe has been claims by clairvoyants or psychics to be channeling poems from Poe's spirit. One of the most notable of these was Lizzie Doughton, who published Poems from the Inner Life in 1863, in which she claimed to have received new compositions by Poe's spirit. The compositions were reworkings of famous Poe poems such as The Bells, but which reflected a new, positive outlook. Even so, Poe has received not only praise, but criticism as well. This is partly because of the negative perception of his personal character and its influence upon High's reputation. William Butler Yeats was occasionally critical of Poe and once called him vulgar. Transcendentalist Ralph Waldo Emerson reacted to The Raven by saying, I see nothing in it, and derisively referred to Poe as the Jingle Man. Aldous Huxley wrote that Poe's writing falls into vulgarity by being too poetical the equivalent of wearing a diamond ring on every finger. It is believed that only 12 copies have survived of Poe's first book Tamerlane and other poems. In December 2009, one copy sold at Christie's, New York for $662,500, a record price paid for a work of American literature. An essay written in 1848, included a cosmological theory that presaged the Big Bang Theory by 80 years, as well as the first plausible solution to Ulber's apostrophe paradox. Poe eschewed the scientific method in Eureka and instead wrote from pure intuition. For this reason, he considered it a work of art, not science, but insisted that it was still true and considered it to be his career masterpiece. Even so, Eureka is full of scientific errors. In particular, Poe's suggestions ignored Newtonian principles regarding the density and rotation of planets. Poe had a keen interest in cryptography. He had placed a notice of his abilities in the Philadelphia paper Alexander's Weekly, Express, Messenger, inviting submissions of ciphers which he proceeded to solve. In July 1841, Poe had published an essay called A Few Words on Secret Writing in Graham's Magazine. Capitalizing on public interest in the topic, 
He wrote The Gold Bug Incorporating Ciphers is an essential part of the story. Poe's success with cryptography relied not so much on his deep knowledge of that field, his method was limited to the simple substitution cryptogram, as on his knowledge of the magazine and newspaper culture. His keen analytical abilities, which were so evident in his detective stories, allowed him to see that the general public was largely ignorant of the methods by which a simple substitution cryptogram can be solved, and he used this to his advantage. The sensation that Poe created with his cryptography stunts played a major role in popularizing cryptograms in newspapers and magazines. Poe had an influence on cryptography beyond increasing public interest during his lifetime. William Friedman, America's foremost cryptologist, was heavily influenced by Poe. Friedman's initial interest in cryptography came from reading The Gold Bug as a child, an interest that he later put to use in deciphering Japan's Purple Code during World War II. The historical Edgar Allan Poe has appeared as a fictionalized character, often representing the mad genius or tormented artist and exploiting his personal struggles. Many such depictions also blend in with characters from his stories, suggesting that Poe and his characters share identities. Often, Fictional depictions of Poe use his mystery-solving skills in such novels as The Poe Shadow by Matthew Pearl. No childhood home of Poe is still standing, including the Allen family's Moldavia estate. The oldest standing home in Richmond, the Old Stone House, is in use as the Edgar Allan Poe Museum, though Poe never lived there. The collection includes many items that Poe used during his time with the Allen family, and also features several rare first printings of Poe works. 13 West Range is the dorm room that Poe is believed to have used while studying at the University of Virginia in 1826, it is preserved and available for visits. Its upkeep is now overseen by a group of students and staff known as the Raven Society. The earliest surviving home in which Poe lived is in Baltimore, preserved as the Edgar Allan Poe House and Museum. Poe is believed to have lived in the home at the age of 23 when he first lived with Maria Clem in Virginia as well as his grandmother and possibly his brother William Henry Leonard Poe. It is open to the public and is also the home of the Edgar Allan Poe Society. Of the several homes that Poe, his wife Virginia, and his mother-in-law Maria rented in Philadelphia, only the last house has survived. The Spring Garden Home, where the author lived in 1843 to 1844, is today preserved by the National Park Service as the Edgar Allan Poe National Historic Site. Poe's final home is preserved as the Edgar Allan Poe Cottage in the Bronx. In Boston, a commemorative plaque on Boylston Street is several blocks away from the actual location of Poe's birth. The house which was his birthplace at 62 Carver Street no longer exists. Also, the street has since been renamed Charles Street South. A square at the intersection of Broadway, Fayette, and Carver Streets had once been named in his honor, but it disappeared when the streets were rearranged. In 2009, the intersection of Charles and Boylston Streets, two blocks north of his birthplace, was designated Edgar Allan Poe Square. In March 2014, fundraising was completed for construction of a permanent memorial sculpture at this location. The winning design by Stephanie Rocknack depicts a life-sized Poe striding against the wind, accompanied by a flying rave on, his suitcase lid has fallen open, leaving a paper trail of literary works embedded in the sidewalk behind him. The public unveiling on October 5, 2014 was attended by former U.S. Poet Laureate Robert Pinsky. Other Poe landmarks include a building in the Upper West Side where Poe temporarily lived when he first moved to New York. A plaque suggests that Poe wrote The Raven here. The bar still stands where legend says that Poe was last seen drinking before his death, in Fells Point in Baltimore. The drinking establishment is now known as The Horse Who Came In On, and local lore insists that a ghost whom they call Edgar haunts the rooms above. Early daguerreotypes of Poe continue to arouse great interest among literary historians. Notable among them are For decades, every January 19, a bottle of cognac and three roses were left at Poe's original grave marker by an unknown visitor affectionately referred to as the Poe Toaster. On August 15, 2007, Sam Porpora, a former historian at the Westminster Church in Baltimore where Poe was buried, claimed that he had started the tradition in 1949. Porpora said that the tradition began in order to raise money and enhance the profile of the church. His story has not been confirmed, and some details which he gave to the press are factually inaccurate. The Poe Toaster's last appearance was on January 19, 2009, the day of Poe's bicentennial. Tales Poetry Other Works Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.